Hello everybody and welcome to another YouTube video from Rootmaster for Hire. In this episode of Unseen Footage, we show you how we service and maintain the unique braking system on a Rootmaster bus. And once again, everything you're about to see was filmed before lockdown. You know, it's been said in the past that the braking system on these is its Achilles heel. I'm not so sure about that, but one thing to be crystal clear of right from the start is the braking system on a Rootmaster bus is not air operated. It's hydraulic. It's a continuous flow hydraulic system that's backed up by two pre-charged accumulators. And as such, it requires specialist knowledge to maintain and service the brakes and specialist tools. Now, this braking system was designed by a company called Lockheed during World War II. And if you're into your aircraft, then the name Lockheed will be very familiar to you. Now, after the war, London Transport, when they were designing the Routemaster bus, specified that that braking system should be used on these buses. But the Routemaster was not the first London bus to be fitted with hydraulic brakes. As early as 1947, London Transport was experimenting with this new braking system. They retrofitted a small batch of RTs, and if you're interested, they ran from Turner Green Garage on Route 55. So what were the advantages of this new braking system? Well, first of all, during the development of the Routemaster, London Transport was obsessed with saving weight. They knew for every ounce of weight saved meant a more fuel efficient bus. And the components needed on this new braking system were much lighter than their air counterparts. Furthermore, the hydraulic systems were much quicker at building up and they didn't freeze in winter. And from a safety point of view as well, it meant the driver always had full brake pressure. Okay, so what about disadvantages? Well, when these buses were in service in London, the braking systems were very reliable. It was only when these buses ended their service lives and ended up in private hands did problems start occurring. Because private owners soon found out very quickly that very few people had the knowledge and the expertise to service and maintain the brakes. So how do you service and maintain the braking system on a Routemaster bus? Well, before you go picking up any tools, there's two things you should check first. And you can do both of those from the comfort of the cab. Now the first thing to check is the clearance between the brake shoes and the brake drums. And you can do that with the handbrake lever. Take the handbrake off, first of all making sure that the wheels are chocked. And then you see how many clicks before the handbrake is locked again. You want a maximum of three. Now you see that was six. So that shows that the gap between the shoes and the drums is too big. So the brakes need adjusting. Now of course the handbrake only locks the rear wheels. But our attitude is, if the backs need doing, the fronts will as well. For the second test, we need to see how much charge is in the accumulators. And to do that, we need to run the engine to build the braking system up to its maximum hydraulic pressure. Now when the stop flag rises in the cab, that means the braking system is up to its minimum pressure. But then what we have to do is wait until we hear a metallic clunk coming from the underside of the bus. That's the cutoff switch, and that tells us the brakes are up to full pressure. That's the stop flag just got up. Now we wait for that clunk. Now I don't know whether the microphone on the camera picked that up, but I definitely heard that cutoff switch kicking in. So now with the engine back off, we make sure the handbrake is off, we press the Aaron's cable back in, and then we see how many reps we get on the brake pedal before the stop flag comes down. We're looking for a minimum of 12. Yeah. 
Well, I only got eight reps on the brake pedal there before the stop flag came down. So that tells me the accumulators on this bus need recharging. So there you have it. After those two quick tests, we now know that the brakes need adjusting and the accumulators need a recharge. So we're going to get the bus up in the air, going to get our overalls on and we're going to get the tools out. But before we do it, it's disclaimer time. OK, this is not a training video and shouldn't be treated as such. We produce these videos for entertainment purposes only. So if you own a Routemaster and you've not attempted to adjust the brakes yourself in the past, please do not use this video as a reference. You should always seek professional help from someone that knows what they're doing. Right, now we're suited and booted, we've moved the bus into position, we're ready to lift it up, but before we do any work on the accumulators, it's important that we fully discharge the system. So that's what Tim's about to do now. So to discharge the system, I'm pressing the brake pedal, and the handbrake will move, and that's because the wheel cylinder is pushing the pads into the drum. So when that stops moving, we know that all the pressure has been exhausted from the system. There we go. So now we've got the bus up in the air, the first job we're going to tackle is adjusting the brakes. Now some of you may be wondering why we don't just allow the slack adjusters to do that job for us. After all, that's what they're there for. Well, in our experience, we just don't think that they do a good enough job. We can do the job far better ourselves. Right, here's the bit that always freaks me out. What we have to do now is support one side of the bus with the axle stand, because we need to be able to turn the wheel free. So we need to take the wiener away from one wheel at a time. Bit airy, this bit. Now, I know this may look dangerous, but if it's done properly, it is completely safe. We lower all the column lifts together until the vehicle suspension is at the height of the axle stand. Then just one lift is lowered until the weight is transferred to the axle stand. This allows us to remove the column lift supporting the wheel so we can spin it to adjust the brakes. So by turning the wheel like this, we can see that that's out of adjustment because there's no binding at all on the, on the pads on the drum. So this here is the slack adjuster. So using a key, we're going to just turn that until there's just a slight bind on the wheel. When the lining of the brake shoe starts to bind with the drum, you can feel the resistance when you turn the wheel. Right, so we can just just feel the bind on the on the uh, on the brake drums there. So that's about right, because we don't want it wound up too much, because it will create extra friction in the drums when the bus is going along the road. Once the offside brakes were adjusted, the column lift was raised and the weight taken off the axle stand. We then moved the stand over to the near side so we could repeat the process on the other front wheel. See, I don't think that needs adjusting. That need adjusting. See, I don't think this near side wheel needs adjustment because as you can hear, it's already binding. And because we've adjusted the offside, it just shows how out of balance the two front brakes were. They need to be lined up pretty much equally. So it just shows that we are right to not trust the slack adjusters on the offside. 
So now we know the fronts are okay, time to do the backs. So now we're going to adjust the rear wheels and I've got Dave to help me because we're driving the prop shaft and driving the gearbox at the same time through the diff that's by here. So in the same way we adjust it up here, we Dave turn it round, I adjust it until we can just hear it start to bind. I wish you'd hurry up, it makes my arms ache this. There we go. So that one wasn't too far out either. Just a couple of clicks and we're right. Off for a lie down now. So the fourth and final wheel, Dave's going to spin the wheel round and the adjustment is just above the exhaust up here. The rear offside slack adjuster is a little difficult to get to because of the position of the exhaust. And as you can see, this job is far easier to do with two people. You can do it on your own, but turning two wheels that are connected to a prop shaft via the diff and adjusting the slack adjuster all at the same time will be hard work on your own. Again. Can you hear that binding? That's it, perfect. So that's the four brakes adjusted. Now we turn our attention to the accumulators. But I think first of all, we'll have a cup of tea. Okay, these are the accumulators here. There's two on the bus, one on top of each other. Accumulator one does the back brakes, accumulator two does the front brakes. I don't know which is one or which is two, but it doesn't matter. They both get pre-charged to 550 PSI. The first job is to get these dust covers off. There's the first one off, and that's the Schreider valve there that you can see. And the top one to get to. Now to recharge them we use nitrogen from a gas bottle. Now you can use just normal compressed air, that's what London Transport used to use, but you must have a water trap because what you don't want to get is any moisture inside. Now some people use a spanner to tighten it up, but I find wiggling the cable around, you can do it finger tight. All you want to do is make it tight enough so that the gas doesn't leak out. Just turn the tap on. Now looking at the dials on my gas bottle, as you can see this accumulator is reading about 30 bar. Now they should be pre-charged to 550 psi, which is about 38 bar. So this accumulator is a little low. So I'm just going to turn on the bottle. Open up the regulator and slowly put the gas in there to about 38 bar, which I reckon is about there. Okay, just turn that off. Right, so with the accumulator now recharged, just about up to 550 psi, before we take the line away, I'm just going to get Tim to repeatedly press the brake pedal. Go on, Tim. With Tim pumping the brake pedal, this will force any excess oil in the accumulator back into the tank. If this happens, we'll see the pressure on the dial fall and we'll have to open up the regulator again to put more nitrogen into the accumulator. Yeah, that'll do. It's not moving. Right, I'm happy with that. That hasn't moved. So we're going to disconnect the airline from the bottom accumulator and flip it over to the top. Having someone in the cab when you're recharging the accumulators saves an awful lot of time, especially if you have the bus up on column lifts. Don't worry about that, that's just the air coming out of the hose. It's also worth pointing out that we always make sure our working area is well ventilated before using nitrogen. This gas is odourless and can be fatal if you breathe it in. Right, that's nice and tight now, let's have a look at the gauges. As you can see this accumulator is down a little bit as well, so we're just going to put a little bit more puff in. Nice 
nice and slowly. That's about 38 bar there. Okay, Tim, pump away. As you can hear, Tim's pumping away on the brake pedal. The dial isn't moving, so I'm happy with that. All right, Tim. Right, that's it. That's two accumulators charged. That's the brakes adjusted. Once I can get this off, we can get the dust caps back on, and we are done. up a bit. So that's the brakes adjusted and the accumulators recharged. Now there's one more job I want to do before we bring the bus down on the ground and that is I want to check all the brake cylinders are working. So I'm going to get Tim to start the bus up, we're going to build the brakes up to pressure and then we'll check the cylinders. Fire it up Tim! quite nerve-wracking being under a bus when it's running. So with the brakes up to pressure we're going to start with the front wheels first. This is the cylinder here and we're going to see if it works. Go on then Tim, pump the brakes. There you go, can you see that spring moving? And we'll come round to the front. There we are, look at that. That's working nice. So that's the offside. Here's the near side. Keep going, Tim. Yep, looking good. And then let's go to the back. Go on then, Tim. There you are. Can you see that moving? All looking good. And finally, on the offside. Yep, all working fine. Let's bring the bus down. Right, with the bus back on the ground, it's the moment of truth. How many clicks are we going to get on the handbrake lever and how many reps will we get on the foot brake? Let's go find out. That's three. Perfect. Now we've charged the accumulators, let's see how many applications we have on the brake pedal. Thirty-six. Right, that's not bad. We've got the right amount of clicks on the handbrake and we've got certainly more than eight reps on the brake pedal before the flag dropped. So over the moon with our afternoon's work. Now there's one more very important thing we always do whenever we've tinkered with the brakes on any of our buses. And that is, we always take them down the road to an independent garage for a brake roller test. And that's what we're going to do now and you're coming with us. Before we leave for the brake test there is just one more thing we need to check. Now we've adjusted the brakes and charged the accumulators, the other thing we do is check the brake oil level, which is just inside this flap, and we do this with the engine room. And make sure it's full against the level. And remember, if you need to top this oil up, do not use brake oil. It has to be hydraulic. We use Morris Lubricants Liquimatic number two.
We get the brakes tested at NPC commercials. They're only about a mile down the road from us and it costs £16 for the test. What's the code, mate? 115 Before we can drive onto the rollers, the operator must input the Department for Transport number, which tells the machine the braking information for the vehicle. The code for a standard route master is 115202. The machine measures the weight of each axle and tests all wheels for bind, time lag and ovality. It also measures any imbalance between each side of the axle. A bit more. Over there. After the front axle has been tested, the bus is moved forward so the rear brakes can be done. The procedure is repeated for the rear axle with the addition of a test for the handbrake. Put your handbrake on as tight as it'll go. Okay. Then it's just an anxious wait for the result and the printout. Jamie, did you test results? Did it pass? Did it pass? Excellent. Yeah. Good for another day. Good for another few months. Like yeah. <laughs> right, well, that's it. We're just leaving the brake test now, and the good news is I have a piece of paper in my hand to say that the bus passed a brake test. So that's really good news. We do this every eight weeks on every single bus in our fleet because we carry passengers. So this gives me the confidence and the peace of mind that the work that we did earlier on today, adjusting the brakes and recharging the accumulators, was right. We didn't cock anything up, and the brakes are now working um, to their full efficiency. I'm confident that when this bus is carrying passengers and it's loaded with 64 people, if it has to, it will stop very, very quickly. Well, that's it. That's the end of another video. Thanks again for watching, and if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe. Also remember to hit that like button as well if you haven't done that too, because the more likes we get on the videos, the higher up the rankings we go on YouTube. If you haven't liked this video, you can hit the dislike button, but please remember you have to hit that button twice. Until next time, bye-bye. For the second test, we need to see how much charge we have in our accumulators, and to do that, we need to run the engine first to build up the hydraulic pressure in the braking system. But try not to install it. <laughs> What did I say before? OK, here's the bit that always freaks me out. We have to use an axle stand to support one side of the bus because we need to take the weight off the wheel of the bus. Fucking hell, that's bollocks, isn't it? Right, these are the accumulators here. Two torpedo-like objects, one on top of the each other. So the accumulators are these two torpedo-like objects, one on top of each other here. I can't fucking speak today. Right, these are the accumulators. These two torpedo looking like fucking dickhead.